discuss the macroeconomic uh, concept of the expenditure model. Now, this is the crux or the foundation behind chapter 2. And what it is, is I'm going to explain to you some of the key elements to form the chapter and also some information that will help you understand the chapter better and help you with the calculations. So this is not a bedtime story where I read you the textbook. This is also not a replacement for a lecture. It's just a short explanation on chapter 2 and some vital components within chapter 2. Okay, so let's start. Chapter 2. Let's start with this graph, the Keynesian expenditure graph, as I like to call it. So, what do you have? You have expenditure on one side and you have income on the other side. Okay? Now, the entire theory is based on um, expenditure and income. So, how the economy works. How, if we spend more money, creates income for someone else. Okay, and I'm going to explain to you a little bit later on. So let's take the 45 degree line. You draw 45 degree line straight through the diagram and you will know that every point on this 45 degree line your y will be equal to your income. So income will be equal to expenditure. So any point on that line your income and your expenditure will be equal to each other. Okay, so very important. So let's continue. Now, in this chapter, it's crucial to know about five variables. C, I, G, X, and Z. Okay. These five variables form your expenditure method to calculate your GDP, an expenditure model. Okay. These are all sectors in the economy. So C is one sector. C plus I is a two-sector model. C plus I plus G is a free sector model and C plus I plus G or C plus I plus G plus X minus Z is a full model. Okay, so one sector, two sectors, three sectors, full model. Okay, very important. Okay, so now let's plot each line on the graph because by viewing the graph you'll be able to see the elements within the graph that can help you in the theory. So, let's just plot our one sector model C. So we say C here, and we draw it as our consumption line. Okay. What did I just do? Firstly, I didn't start at a zero. I started at a point above the zero. So maybe let's say this is 50. I started at 50. Why? Because there's a certain element within consumption, C, which is consumption, there's a certain element that is autonomous. Now, autonomous means that it's consumed without income, okay? So that's the, it's independent of income. In this chapter, you can uh, highlight the word as autonomous, meaning independent of changes in income, okay? So 50 rand will be consumed, okay, irregardless of whether you receive income or not. Okay, so you will receive 50 rand of income. This is the autonomous part. Then the induced part it's a part that changes. And this part will change your income or your consumption as soon as you get more income. So it will change your consumption as soon as you get more income. So this is our one central model. Okay? Quickly just to highlight, the slope of this line is the MPC, the marginal propensity to consume. That determines how much of our income will be consumed. We earn one rand, how much of that income will then be consumed? Of that one rand will be consumed. Let's say you earn the one rand, then you consume 0 0.8 rand, so 80 cents. Then your MPC is equal to 0 0.8, and that is also the slope of this line. So that is the basis behind the consumption. 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 Okay. So that's the basis behind the consumption. Now let's take the two-sector model with investment. We just add 
in basement. Now, if we add in basement, which is a positive this one, we add to our expenditure. So if you consume 50 and you just add one citrus model, now you add in basement, so now your expenditure in the economy is more. So your line should shift above the 50 line to C plus I. Okay? Let's say 200. Now, easy. If I ask you what is investment worth? What's autonomous investment? Or what is investment? Okay? You will know from this value that consumption was 50. Your new model is 100. So your consumption or your investment should be 50. The difference between the two. Okay? Now, what is investment? Investment is independent of income. So all investment is autonomous. Okay? The only variable that can influence the investment is the interest rates. We all know that there's a negative relationship between interest rates and investments, but we'll get into more detail in Chapter 3. So, now you add your two-sector model. Now let's add another sector, the government. So let's add a third sector. Okay. Now, C plus I plus G. Now, very important. From my drawings, you probably won't be able to see this, but the slope of my line changed. These two lines are still dependent on your NPC. This new line, the slope changes. Why? Why does this happen? Because you introduce tax. Okay. Now tax will influence our NPC, how much we are willing to consume our income, because we need to pay more now, we need to pay taxes. So taxes will influence your slope and will also influence your multiplier. Something that I will just explain a little bit later on. Okay, so for now just understand that the slope will change of this line due to introduction of tax and then when you add the last line, the full model one, then you can just draw the same one. So these two, the slopes are equal and in these two, the slopes are equal. Okay, but for the rest it's not. Okay, so I hope you understand the graph better with this explanation. Let's get into something that's very important, and that's called the expenditure multiplier. Okay? The expenditure multiplier is a very important concept to understand. Okay? So let's take a one-sector model or two-sector model. What is the formula for it? 1 over 1 minus B, which is your NPC. Okay? That's our easy formula. When we add a government, we get a new formula. 1 over 1 minus B, 1 minus T. Okay? That's your one in a full model and with plus G when you add the government into the equation. Okay, then you add the taxes. So when we add taxes in our questions, then we need to use this expenditure multiplier. Okay, then you get a tax multiplier, which I'm not going to explain today. So, very important, what is a multiplier? Now, I told this example in class, but let me re-explain it. So let's say I go out tonight and I go and buy a pizza. For 100 rand. Okay? I spend 100 rand on the pizza. So that's my spending. That doesn't mean that the owner of the pizza store is going to take my 100 rand and he's going to burn it. No, what's he going to do? He's going to take my 100 rand and he's going to give it to his workers as income. Now, all of a sudden, my income or my, my income I used as spending money became someone else's income and they will then go and use that as spending money. So you understand? So that's the cycle you use to work with. So that 100 rand of mine will probably be seen a lot, a lot more times in the economy just once. So that's very important. So um, the best diagram I always use to explain it is something like this. So you start with 100 rand and then you go. And you, depending on how large your multiplier is, this circle will get bigger and will probably generate, let's say the multiplier is 5, so the multiplier is 5, and this 100 rand will generate 500 rand, circulate 500 rand in the economy. Okay, that's very important. So let's explain this in a more economical way. And this will also highlight how the economy grows and everything. You should know this by your first year work. Okay, now if, let's say, you spend I spend 100 rand. This 100 rand needs to, I spend 100 rand, thus I need a product. So production will increase by 100. Okay? So production 
should then increase by 100. Okay? If production increases, they need to employ more people. And if they employ more people, more people get income, and that increases, and that again increases your spending. So you can see it's a cycle that continues and continues until the multiplier is determined on how many times the cycle repeats itself. Okay? So that's all dependent on what your multiplier is. The larger the multiplier, the more the money will be circulated within the economy, or the more the spending will grow into more production, more employment, and more income. Okay, so that is the basis behind the expenditure, now multiplier. Now, to get back to our graph, and it's easier to show this on a graph, let's quickly go and draw our Keynesian graph again. Okay, 45 degree line, and let's take this one as C plus I plus G plus X minus X. Okay, let's give you a value here, 250. I give you this value and I ask you, this is now the expenditure, so what is your equilibrium income level here? What is this point? Okay. So if this is 250, what is this point? I want to know what this point is, what this equilibrium income is. So what is the equilibrium income in the economy? So you have the 250, which is your autonomous consumption, or sorry, autonomous expenditure in the economy. So the autonomous expenditure in the economy is 250. Now, I want you to indicate to me what this equilibrium income is. Now, how do you calculate that? You take your autonomous expenditure, the 250, so the 250 times your multiplier. So times your multiplier. So you calculate your multiplier. If I tell you the MPC of this line is 0 0.8, then you say, okay, let me calculate my multiplier. 1 over 1 minus 0 0.8, that will give you 5. Okay? So you get 5, you say, okay, 250 times 5, it gives you 1,250. So this, um, so 5, so this gives you 1,250, so that is then your equilibrium income. Okay? So that is the basis behind calculating your equilibrium income. You take your autonomous expenditure, which is all of these variables added together, the autonomous section, and then times your multiplier that you calculated, or maybe get, and then you get your equilibrium income. So these are the calculations, but more importantly, it's, a, it's important to understand these concepts. Know what they are, know what they are called, and know what will influence them. What will influence our autonomous spending? What will influence our consumption? What will influence our income? Okay, all of these variables are very important to understand, and know how to link each one of them. I hope this actually explains some of the more complicated concepts for you. Um, it's just a quick overview on what Chapter 2 is all about, and you can expand on this from your textbook and look more in detail from various sections within your textbook. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day, and I hope to see you in class. And then, yes, thank you very much.